Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kayla, otherwise known as Let's Get Knit Face, here on YouTube and over on Instagram if you want to give me a follow there. And we do some knitting, crocheting, and sewing content on this channel and also tutorials, which is what I have for you today. It is for this scarf that I'm wearing and it doesn't have a name, but if you think of one, please feel free to comment that down below. It has these bobble details on it and the yarn that I used has this nice color gradient built into it and then also some fringe detail to add some length to the yarn and some movement and I think that's really fun. I did knit this very long. It's about double my height which I think is a great length for a scarf to go around your neck and then hang down a good ways because I think that's really pretty but obviously you can make this whatever length that you want and I will show you the yarn that I used, the needles that I used, and all the techniques in this video so please keep watching. I knit this on straight needles so there's no circular or different kind of supplies that you're going to need. It's just needles and yarn, good old-fashioned knitting. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. And definitely in the comments, let me know anything else you would like to see me make a tutorial for because I'm always open to ideas. So with that, let's get into it. I want to start off this tutorial by showing you a sneak peek into my design process. So normally I like to make a sketch it's something a little bit complicated that I want to be able to visualize on paper so that's what I'm doing by drawing these little ovals that are supposed to be the bobbles that I'm visualizing for this scarf I want there to be some sort of channel that runs along the sides of each of them and that will be made up of knit stitches and the same stitch basically that will fill the bobbles and then next to those channels will be a row of purling stitches so here I am writing out the number of stitches that I visualize taking up this space and then that allows me to count them all together and then know how many I need to cast on. This is something that you don't need to do. I have all the numbers worked out for you, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of my process in how I designed this scarf. I also wanted to add some tassels, so here I am just very sloppily drawing those in for some reason. Oh, smiley face, yay. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty of the pattern. From that drawing, I know that we want to cast on 31 stitches. That will get us the appropriate amount of bobbles and enough space in between the bobbles to make them stand out enough. Here I am writing out the first row, which will consist of four bobbles, which I have here in my drawing, and those need to be made up of five knit stitches and then separated by a purl stitch, a knit stitch, and then another purl stitch. So that is going to be the pattern in this first row, which I'm writing out here and this will become more clear as we work it up. So let's get into that right now. I will be using universal yarn in the style major and in the color 116 or highborn. This is a bulky weight yarn, so you can substitute with any of your favorite bulky weight yarn. It is acrylic, so it'll be washable and low maintenance. The ball itself has 330 yards in it, and it calls for size 10 needles, which is negotiable because I would say for this pattern you could go with your bulky yarn anywhere from a size 9 to a size 11 needle depending on the look you want. The tighter the stitch you want, the lower the number needle you're going to need to use. I was looking for a looser style so I knit this with a size 11 needle and this bulky weight universal yarn and you can see what I have in the finished object. So the scarf I made ended up being around 11 feet and I used the full 330 yards that the ball had. So that is what this pattern will call for, give or take, if you want to have more or less of a length. So long story short, size 11 needles for me, 330 yards of bulky weight yarn, and here I am putting a slip knot on my needle and then casting on 31 stitches in total to get us started with our beautiful winter scarf. So we are forming bobbles, right? And that's important to remember as we begin this pattern. So I have here my list in front of me and I'm going to begin by purling one and then that is going to lead us into our first bobble. These are going to be made up of knit stitches on the right side and purls on the wrong side. So I am knitting five stitches to start that first bobble. Then I'm going to purl one all this information will be listed in the description of the video. Then I'm going to knit one and then follow that by purling one. That is creating our channel. And then I'm going to start working the next bobble, which will be knitting five stitches. The channels in between the bobbles are going to lead into bobbles in the next section. This will all become more clear. Don't worry, don't worry. 
Now we are going to purl one stitch, knit one stitch, purl one more stitch, and then knit five stitches. This is the pattern that we will use all the way down the row. But I'm walking through it with you in real time. Because I know that is something you guys prefer, is that I slow down. So here I'm purling one stitch, followed by knitting the next, being sure to spread out my stitches on my needles. The first row is definitely the hardest, so just take your time and sit with me while I talk you through it or look at the instructions in the description and that will help you. Then I'm going to knit one stitch and then purl one stitch. So that means now I'm going to knit the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. That was, that was the end of our last bobble and I'm going to purl one to end the row. Moving on to row number two, we are going to be doing the exact same thing as row number one, but in the reverse because we are now working on the wrong side of the scarf. So that means instead of purling, we're knitting. Instead of knitting, we are purling. So let's get into that. To begin the second row, we are going to knit one. And then instead of knitting five, we are going to purl five. So there is my first purl, second purl, third purl, fourth pearl and fifth pearl. Now we are going to knit one, purl one, knit one, and then we are going to purl five more stitches for our second bobble. Second pearl, third pearl, fourth pearl and fifth pearl. Then we're going to knit one, purl one, and knit one. And if you notice, as you are beginning these initial rows and your stitches are too loose, you might want to go up a size in your needles. And if you're noticing they're too tight and it's hard to knit, you want to go down a size in your needles. Knit one, then you want to purl, knit, and then we're back to purling five stitches. Purl two, purl number three, Purl number four and purl number five. That will take us to our last knit stitch to end the row. And this will be a good way to make sure that if you're ending with the right stitch, you did everything right the whole row. The next two rows are going to be identical to the last two rows we completed. So if you understand the pattern that I've just laid out for you, go ahead and work those two rows up. But if you still need help, please rewind this footage back to marker six minutes and 43 seconds. And that will help you get through those two rows again, just like we did. And then I don't have to refilm the voiceover for that part. This will then take us to the part where we're going to begin the transition from ending one bobble and then beginning a new row of bobbles. So get excited, people, and meet me back here when you finish those two rows. Now we can start with the portion of the scarf where we're going to end a row of bobbles and begin a new one. So as you can see in the finished scarf here with this red circle, you can see there's a stitch that cinches all of the former rows bobbles together and begins a channel with that and then turns the channel into a new row of bobbles. That's what we're going to be doing here. So first we're going to purl the first stitch like we always do on the right side of the row. Then we are going to turn these five bobble stitches into one channel stitch. So that means I'm going to pinch all five stitches together, 
Then I'm going to bring my needle and I'm going to knit all five of them together. So this is similar to the knit two together stitch, except you're knitting five stitches together. So just work your needle under all five stitches and then knit as normal. It will be a tight stitch to kind of maneuver, but definitely just take your time. Make sure you have all five included. Then I'm purling one stitch. And now I need to take this channel stitch and turn it into five stitches. So I've just knit through the front of the stitch. Now I'm going to knit in the back and not take off that loop that's on the left needle. I'm knitting through the front of the stitch again, knitting through the back of the same stitch again, keeping my tension loose, and then I'm lastly knitting through the front of the stitch and then slipping it off the left needle. So that just made one stitch into five stitches. A knit front back five times. Then you can count to make sure you have five, and then purl the next stitch now we need to decrease that bobble again so we're going to knit five together making sure to include all five stitches don't want to have any drop stitches that peek out in your scarf later then i'm purling the neighboring stitch now i'm back working into that channel stitch so i'm knitting five stitches from this one stitch so now i'm knitting into the front for the third stitch Keeping that loop on my left needle, knitting through the back for my fourth stitch, and then knitting through the front for my final stitch. Again, loose tension here is very important. Now I'm going to purl the neighboring stitch because those will be our dividers to make those bobbles pop out. Now I'm knitting five stitches together Again, just pinching them to make sure that I have a good grip. Working the round. This is going to be the row that takes the most time, but then the following rows will be creating the body of the bobble, and then you'll do one of these rows to separate them and start a new one. Okay, now I am knitting front back five times. There's two, three, four, Gotta get some more yarn, four, and five. That means I'm going to purl the neighboring stitch and then knit five together. So definitely feel free to slow this clip down on YouTube. There's a setting you can make it play at um, 0.5 speed if that's what you need or keep rewatching this until you get it. But this is really just going to be a visual aid to understand the stitch and now you know how those bobbles are going to be made. Now I'm just purling the last stitch and then we can begin working on the wrong side of the yarn. It's nice to spread it out, see what we have working with and we see that those bobbles are now starting to pop out a little bit and now we can work on the wrong side of the yarn to keep building up the body of the scarf. So the wrong side of the rows are pretty much always going to be the same except they alternate with the placement of the bobbles. So we just moved the placement of the bottle bobbles because we created new ones and ended the old ones. So now there will be three instead of four. So now we are going to alternate a little bit of the stitches, but you'll see what I mean. So let's keep going. Now we can begin on the wrong side by knitting one stitch and then purling one stitch and then knitting one And then purling one, two, three, purling a fourth stitch, and then purling a fifth stitch. That is now working where that new bobble is. Then we're going to knit one stitch, purl one stitch, and then knit one stitch. And now we're going to work on the bobble. So we are purling five stitches here. This is our second purl third purl, fourth purl, and fifth purl. Now we're going to knit one, purl one, and then knit one. And if you feel like you have a hang of the stitches, go ahead and just follow the pattern as listed in the description. You are all good to go, but I'm just going to keep running through these rows, the last two rows, for anybody who still needs more help. So now we are going to purl these five stitches for our new bobble. Let 
then knit one, purl one, and then end with a knit stitch. And that is our, going to be our wrong side row when we have three bobbles. And the right side will just be the opposite of that. So I'm going to work up a complete bobble here. The instructions will be in the description for you to follow along as I've showed you pretty much all the stitches you need to know to get through this and also the techniques. So now I'm going to show you what to do once you have worked eight rows, which is going to be the length of a bobble, or you can honestly amend that to be however long you think looks best. And now we want to end the bobble and recreate new ones. So that's what I'm going to show you here. So I'm going to begin by purling one, as in all the rows on the right side. Then to begin this bobble that I have here, I'm going to knit front back five times. So here I am working into the front for my third stitch, into the back for my fourth, and into the front a final time for my fifth stitch. Then I'm going to purl one. Then I'm going to take those five stitches for my bobble and knit them together. And if you think my bobbles here look too compact and you want good to go for a longer look, definitely go ahead and make more rows and then do this row. It's really up to you, the look that you want to do. Now I'm going to knit front back five times to begin another bobble in this area. I will link a knit front back tutorial video for you in the description if you would like to watch a different one. Then I'm going to purl one. Then I'm going to knit five stitches together. Then I'm going to purl one stitch and then knit front back five times through the back through the front leaving that loop on my hook i'm knitting through the back again keeping my tension loose and then knitting through the front one last time then i'm going to purl one and then knit five stitches together being sure to take the exact amount that i need and now that we've knit up a decent amount, you can tell which is your purl row and which is your knit row very easily. Then I'm going to purl one, and then I'm going to make my last bobble by knitting front back five times. This pattern really starts to pick up pace and become really easy. And then purl one to end the row. And that is how you're going to end that row of three bobbles, right? Because that we went from four to three. Now we have four again to work up and then we'll break them apart with a row like that. And that is really the whole pattern, guys. So I'm just going to keep working and working this scarf. I actually filmed this part of the video about a month ago. I was just kind of working on this pattern intermittently, but definitely look in the description for the full pattern and, and check back in yeah, with this video when you are ready this for video as many some times as you need to, to understand the, the your scarf. That will be our next use. step, and I will and also just have a nice time working up this relaxing pattern that in the description of the video. So when you come back, you can find it easily and get ready to go. Now that we have our scarf all worked up to approximately double your height, I think that's the best guideline. But obviously. Whatever you want goes, we are going to add some fringe. So that's what I have on the other side. And I'm going to match here on this edge. And I have some yarn. I believe it's about 50 or 40 yards of the same yarn that I've cut into one foot long or 12 inches or 30 centimeters long pieces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of them at a time to make this go a little bit faster. And I'm just going to thread them in between a hole on the bottom line of the scarf, getting as close to that edge as possible and just finding like a little gap in there that I could slide these two into and then pull out the other end. No need to use a darning needle here. I feel like it'll just take too long threading it. Whatever works for you though. Um, so yeah, I'm just basically threading that through a little gap that I see. And because this yarn is variegated, I'm trying to grab a little bit of 
one color mixed with a little bit of another to make sure it looks even across the fringe but then I tie a double knot and really that's all there is to it I just keep doing that all the way across you can make this as dense or as thin as you want whatever you want you can make it shorter and more compact you can attach pom-poms on the bottom you can make these into tassels you can make them a foot long honestly the world is yours Knitting is your oyster, as I always say, but I just wanted to go for a simple fringe look. And again, this is about 40 or 50 yards of that same fabric. You could also do an, a different color. I think it would be pretty to do like a white fringe or a black or a gray. Um, add some color story there. Totally, totally up to you. So many options, okay? This is the best part. You're finishing up. You're wrapping up all your hard work. Next, you're just going to want to trim up any ends that you have that may not be all the same length so just go ahead and trim those really quickly and next is going to be the step of blocking totally not necessary especially if you're using acrylic but i found that the edges of my scarf were rolling in a bit and i wanted to try to stop that so here i am blocking in cold water i'm just soaking the scarf completely in it and i do have a whole video dedicated to blocking which i will link below if you want to watch that but here in this 30 second clip i'm just wringing out the water gently so as not to disturb the pattern of the piece, making sure I'm using cold water and then I'm towel drying that as best as I can. And then I have these play mats that I got online and some pins that I'm using to stretch out the scarf and then pin it in place and put the pin into the styrofoam that's underneath it. And I'm pulling as tight as possible so that hopefully when it dries, it will stop curling in on the edges. And that is it. Isn't it so fun? I love this scarf. I'm going to wear it all the time. Just like this. I think my favorite part of the scarf is definitely the fringe. But yeah, that's really it. You just knit for a while until you have the length that you want. And that is all there is to it. If you have a finished scarf, please take a picture and send me a DM on Instagram. I'm at Let's Get Knit Face there. I would love to see what you made. And that's really it, you guys. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe below for more content, you know the drill, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye!